There's Lucifer right there, which means Cape Up RC is in Denver, Colorado. But I gotta take you guys back in time and show you what I've been working on for this uh, Matsuri Potluck 3 at Scale Science. <laughs> Yes, welcome back to another episode of K-Pop RC's The Lab. I've got a pretty wicked adventure planned. I'm going to Denver, Colorado early in the morning. I'm trying to finish a completely custom RC car for this event and uh, I'm putting it together in this video. So stay tuned for that. At the end, you'll find me at Scale Science in Denver, Colorado. What? Let's go back in time a little bit and check out two days ago when I started piecing together this 6R4 Metro MG. One of the darlings of the Group B era. You guys know I'm all about scale. Scale as shit everything. And of course, that's exactly what I try to do when I build my RC drift cars. That doesn't necessarily mean I don't have my conventional YD2 that is just ready to go and it's like driftable and it's very predictable and awesome. This thing is amazing. However, I always do end up finding myself building the most impractical RC drift cars ever and I'm hoping this particular one breaks that mold, at least breaks the mold in terms of functionality because it's definitely gonna be a freaking heavy mother. Woo! That's gonna be heavy as F. I've built a bunch of Group B rally cars in the past. Last year I built the Audi S1 Quattro and uh, it sat on a custom built 3D printed chassis based on the Secura 5D. I always use the Secura 5D because it's a semi-decent chassis for what it's worth. Definitely for what it's worth. It's $100, $120 to get the chassis and you can pretty much do anything you want with it. I custom built this chassis for last year's Matsuri and of course I had to step it up this year. Mm. I still drift this thing. Like this is still like my go-to drifter. Like it, this thing drifts so freaking well. The concept of this build is to do something that I have always wanted to do. And that is to make a very conventional style RC drift chassis. Now a very real chassis. My idea is to take an already existing chassis and taking off the running gear front and rear because these are mostly rear wheel drive cars. Nothing connects the front subframe to the rear subframe. So this is the Secura 5D Lite. Uh, and I, I raised the, the upper control arms in order to gain more adjustment, kind of biting the styles of RC companies that are trying to get high centered. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if we can tune it in Denver. Uh, it might be good. Anyway, this is the rear caddy. Most RC drift cars come with very narrow chassis plates. This is the uh, 5DMR chassis plate. It's the stock one. And it doesn't look at all like a race car, let alone a unibody real drift car. And that's not what I like. I, if I'm gonna be custom building my RC car, I'm gonna try to make it as realistic as possible. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Ha! This is the first print, the first iteration of the 6R4. This just was a proof of concept to see if I can get things to work. Here is one of the uh, front subframes that, that's the sub front subframe. You build your whole running gear on these sort of little chassis plates. And then these chassis plates then will bolt directly to our unibody let's call it a unibody uh, and what's cool about that is that we can also adjust the height so because this is a rally car what i was doing was i was actually pushing the running gear lower and lower and raising the body as high as i possibly can go also what's cool is i put the battery in the cab and it is reachable by the passenger door you, you can slide your battery in clip it in place and you're good to go your wire leads go here and everything is golden. These, this is so sick, man. So that's basically 
how this project starts here. Check it out. This is, I guess, the center floor pan, you know, right here. So then we got this uh, dashboard. I tried to print everything kind of super low infill so it's like light, but uh, it's super cool. And now this guy screws right into, um, yeah, the center floor pan. So let's do that. I'm hoping you're focusing. Yeah, you are. All right, so check it out. We got this little piece here and then this guy that goes on top of there, but we're gonna wait with this guy because I think this should probably bolt to the rear body before anything. Sick, okay, let's keep moving. This is the roof section. This is the Lexan windshield. Yeah, uh, and that's gonna go here and I'm gonna super glue that into place. I was kind of already playing around with seeing what uh, Super glue was like with uh, Lexan, and I guess obviously there we're finding out it's pretty brittle. All right, so check it out. This is uh, kind of the cockpit, you know. Uh, unfortunately, still have to figure out how to hinge these doors. I think I got a good handle on it. You know, it's gonna sit like that. All right, and it's gonna open like this. But I got to design that tonight because I'm leaving in two days. This is how far I am on Thursday night, and it's like late. But I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it all together. At least if I can't get the doors on, I can't get the doors on. Go. This is like I think the main backbone of, uh, of this platform. Fuck, it's already like what? One in the morning, Thursday night. So much to do, so little time. Okay. That's six. So now this fucking thing basically goes like that. That wiring's gotta go that way and down and over. That's cool. There it is. It's the backbone, basically, of the build. Huge. Now, check this out.
Yeah, sweet. So the whole concept of this thing is just to have a hinge on the back. I might have to, because I added all this weight, so now the springs are actually doing stuff. So, you know, have to adjust the shocks a little bit to get the ride height a little higher in the rear. Uh, so it'll probably sit up like that. But then it'll also lean, so the lean in the back has really no bearing on what's happening with the suspension, right? It's just sort of leaning back and forth. On the front is what uh, will throw the car uh, back and forth, but it's looking sick now. Just these rims have to be yellow and, uh, and damn, you know what I'm saying? Damn. Also, the front's got to go on. All right, so check this out. This is the hinge, so I redesigned the hinge uh, and moved the hinge further away from the door so the door should lift away from the car. So that bracket goes like this, right? The whole thing swings out. Anyway, let's put some screws in it. This guy. That's my hinge that I designed. I painted it so recently. Still printing another hinge, which is kind of funny. The back end is the last piece of the puzzle, but we need to put the lights in. Let's just throw this guy right there. So sweet, man. Look at that. Look how wobbly it is. And then the door is cool too. I'm like rushing pretty hard just to get, I'm not rushing. I'm rushing really hard to get out of here. Um, my flight leaves in like, I don't know, like 12 hours. And so I'm trying my best to finish this. Uh, the back hatch in black is being printed right now on the 3D printer. And, uh, and I'm really hoping I, I, I leave with one because uh, I gotta cover the back half of this thing. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much ready to go. It is still kind of jank as tough, but what Group B rally car isn't really? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, it's pretty fire. I'm gonna shoot some B-roll before I totally pack it up. I got another four hours of printing uh, for the back hatch and I don't have time to do hinges. So I'm just gonna end up having to screw screw the hatch in, which is too bad, but that's just the way it goes. Uh, anyway, I'm taking the BMW as well to scale science. It's my freaking basher. This thing's been beat to hell. So, um, man, it'll be good to slide some corners with some of the scale science crew. Anyway, dudes, I'm running out of freaking time and I really need to start packing things up. So uh, I'm gonna pack this camera and I think from now on, we're gonna be using a much lower quality kind of action cam to do any narrative uh, recording because let's face it, uh, I'm just running out of time and this camera needs to get packed away. So man, all right, uh, this camera, I'll see you in freaking Denver, let's go. Denver. Next stop, scale science. Right. So apparently, Denver Airport has all this weird iconography, specifically to do with pollution and war. 
Uh, so if you're in the De Denver airport, make sure to check out Blucifer, the four-story horse with red eyes, and all of the gargoyles that you can find uh, when you're uh, getting your baggage, getting to baggage claim. Super weird. I was nice to the guy at the counter, and look what he gave me. Genesis. <laughs> Sick. Stop. Let's go say hi, shall we? Scale science. Oh. Yes, buddy. What's up, brother? What's up, man? How are you? Oh, I'm just getting here. here. Are you ready? I feel like you're you're not ready. Never ready. <laughs> Never ever, man. You Never know me. Watch it be like all shattered and you up in pieces or something. Oh. Flight attendant. Flight attendant being, being a dummy. Oh, sounds like things are in pieces. No, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. Yes. Uh, boop. <laughs> what? And then, uh, I haven't, I didn't secure it yet or anything. But, uh, wow. And then this, I mean, I just taped, I didn't have time to make hinges. Well, hey, if you got anything that... You, I'll just glue it. If you like, tape it. If you have a file, man, I got two printers at the house. You're welcome oh, to lose. Oh, shit, yeah. Okay. Throw down on, I mean, I only have PLA, but... Whatever. That'll at least work. help you for the weekend. Eh, I would say, well, I'll just glue it and then it'll like, not glue it, like double sided tape it. And then for now, like Maiden, why not? You know? I think this is fucking crazy. What's cool is like. <laughs> I, I mean, I hope the wires don't do weird shit, but like. Dude, this is like. It's kind of like what homie should be, you know? The. The. 8.6 guy? Right. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're like That's using right. the, the good RC components so it'll actually work. Well, I hope, because like it's a it's a light, right? It's a D5 light. So like even the turnbuckles are shittier than the 5D. And like you can't, like I can't get tow out, really. Like what the hell, why would they design it so you can't, you can't go aggressively tow out? Or uh, yeah. You could um... Like I have to get rid of that little shim shim your shim arms there. if you could a little bit. Yeah, and then that would everything help. would have to get. I guess you have to change. Or you could um, swap the turnbuckles for like an all thread and shim them the same way. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, true. Exactly. That's probably the best way because that's the easiest. Then I don't have to worry about anything else. Okay. Typical five D. The right side is perfect. The left side sticks. Oh shit. Is it an arm or is the arms moving free? It's everything. I, I, when I take it all apart, it runs super smooth. So I'm assuming it's just like the notorious O ring just stickiness just sticky. in the shock. Okay. Because like it doesn't want to like. This one, it's like it just it does whatever, whatever the inertia wants it to do. Yeah. This side is like it stops at the bottom and it stops at the top. But I don't know. We'll see. Maybe, maybe just like running it a few laps will kind of loosen them up a bit. Like, work man or something so it's like it's kind of sick that's really yeah. oh uh i do need something though what's up i need rims that i can paint yellow that's it for this episode of k-pop rc if you want to see the 6r4 on its maiden voyage then subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode of the scale science matsuri potluck don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this kind of content let me know in the comments below if you want to see more uh, rc travel trips because i'm down K-pop out.